Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of Chapter One Read Aloud. Today I'm going to be continuing on with reading books that are featured in our virtual book fair, which once again is happening until May 24th, so just below you will see the link that you can click on to start shopping. This book is called Trapped. Now Trapped is considered a young adult book, YA book, because of some questionable language that's in it. So just a heads up that if you are considering purchasing this book, it is considered a YA book. A chilling YA thriller from critically acclaimed author Michael Northrup. The day the blizzard started, no one knew that it was going to keep snowing for a week. That for those in its path, it would become not just a matter of keeping warm, but of staying alive. Scotty and his friends Pete and Jason are among the last seven kids at their high school waiting to get picked up that day, and they soon realize that no one is coming for them. Still, it doesn't seem so bad to spend the night at school, especially when distractingly hot Krista and Julia are sleeping just down the hall. But then the power goes out, and then the heat. The pipes freeze and the roof shutters. As the days add up, the snow piles higher and the empty halls grow colder and darker. The mounting pressure faces a devastating decision. So here it is, chapter one of the book Trapped. We were the last seven kids waiting around to get picked up from Tatawa Regional High School. It sounds like an everyday thing, but this was, wasn't an ordinary day. It was one of those bullseyes in history, one of those points where everything comes together, where if you were at that place in time, you were part of something big. It meant that we weren't going to get picked up, not on that day and maybe not ever. It was the day the blizzard started and it didn't stop for nearly a week. No one had seen anything like it. It was a natural disaster in the way that earthquakes and tidal waves are natural disasters. It wasn't a storm, it was whatever comes after that. The power lines came down and the airports closed. The snow was so strong that it seemed to hit the ground in drifts. The roads shut down completely. The plows ground to a halt and stranded themselves, overmatched up front and the snow behind already too deep for them to back up. Really, if you want one quick indicator of what kind of storm it was, drivers froze in their snow plows. People hunkered down in their homes. They were used to doing that in this part of New England. But in the past, it had always been for six hours or 12 or maybe a day at most. This was different, and it required a different kind of waiting. You could hear the details in a thousand coffee shops at the back table where the locals hang out. I'll just tell you, though, the Northeaster moved up the coast and stalled. But instead of weakening, it got stronger. From what I heard, it just kind of got wedged there in between a huge cold front coming down and a massive warm front coming up scooping up moisture over the Atlantic and dropping it as snow back on the land. They still show the picture of TV, on TV sometimes, a giant white pinwheel spanning three states. Inside the homes and shelters, people waited and watched and counted and recounted their canned food. They all asked themselves the same question, how much longer can this last? But they asked it day after day in lamplight and then candlelight and then in darkness and creeping cold. But that was later on. At the beginning, it was just us, looking out the window and watching the snowfall. Mr. Gossel stayed with us. He was a gruff guy, a history teacher, an assistant football coach. Your school probably has one of those. He sort of carried himself like he was in the army, and I don't know, maybe he had been. He was the last teacher left, but when he shouldered the door open and headed out to get help, well, that was the last we saw of him. We added his name to the list of people we were waiting for. We imagined headlights cutting through the snow, there to battle the roads and take us home. The driver would throw open the passenger side door, climb aboard, he'd shout, hop on in, we'll get you home. But we weren't going anywhere. The headlights didn't show. Mr. Gossel, Jason's dad, Krista's mom, whoever it was we were waiting for, they had nothing to do with us anymore. No one did. It was just the seven of us. The seven of us and the endless snow. So if you like books about natural disasters, plus the added element of a thriller, definitely check out Trapped. And that's it for chapter one, read aloud. See you next time.